Hello, folks, and uh, one more time, I greet you welcome. We are television active as I speak with you. And uh, I welcome you, one and all, to Homo Politicus on Enterprise TV. What, what we do here is simple, interrogate issues thrown up by the Nigerian Federation. Today, understanding the jinxed politics of petroleum product supply in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria, our Nigeria, is the second largest oil and gas producer in Africa after Angola. But that we have elected to be caught in a never-ending cycle of an unthinkable petroleum product supply chain, if only to ease the everyday pains of the everyday Nigerian, is a matter for deep regret. Our countrymen and women have been grappling with a nerve-wracking queue with nerve-wracking queues at petrol stations across the country for some days now. Whereas the NNPCL authorities blame the shortage on supply disruptions due to logistical challenges, the Omnibus Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, or IPMAN, IPMAN for short, insists that the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority NMDPRA is responsible for the, for the fiasco. Ipman has therefore threatened to shut down operations if a 200 billion naira debt owed it was not paid. This is plain buck, pack, buck passing, if you ask me. A blame game that helps nobody here. Are we in a vice? Let's have a conversation. My two guests this morning are very familiar to you. Let's meet and greet them. Comrade Bwenga Komolafe is a unionist and a political commentator. Comrade, I greet you. Welcome. Good morning. And he's joined by Dr. Olabisi Deji Folutile, journalist, public affairs analyst. Dr. Folutile, I greet you one more time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, we know the story. Yes, we do. So, what new are we expecting? Are you asking me? Oh, oh yeah. Comrade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say since I was born okay. and up till now there are two things that have been so common in Nigeria that you just wonder so, so normal you uh, can almost expect it exactly power failure and uh, disruptions disruptions in, in fuel su supplies mm. and uh, you just ask yourself why should this be? We thought that uh, the so-called uh, the regulation of this uh, administration removal of subsidy, mm. because what they told us was that once subsidy is removed, this and this and this. But, but, but may I ask you uh, uh, on on the sideline? Uh, did you uh, what did you think was wrong, if at all, with subsidy? With subsidy. Subsidy payment, yeah. Everything with subsidy payment or removal. Payment. Payment. And therefore, it's removal. Well, for me, I don't even think uh, we are the, we have a transparent uh, record of what we were consuming, how we were consuming, and the landing cost of petroleum. And also the so, so, corruption. So for you, for you that something corruption. was wrong there. Everything was wrong there. Mm. So to even say we are you are removing subsidy, we don't even know the subsidy mm. because we don't know the landing cost. Okay. We don't know the number of uh, gallons we use per day, mm. and, and it's so opaque, no transparency. So every time they talk about subsidy, who are we subsidizing really? Mm. And, uh, but, but, but we are to know that governments across you remember, the world subsidize this. You remember that even during uh, Good Luck Jonathan's administration, yeah. the finance minister then uh, did publish some companies and That's, names. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, yeah. yeah, that suggested that the so-called subsidy that we thought uh, government was paying was being paid to certain individuals. individuals yeah. So. It was free money. It was free money for them. So when they talk about subsidy in Nigeria, you don't really know who is saying who what. Is say, who is getting what. Mm. 
So it's like people are just suffering. And in this particular case, why do we know that there is a problem with our own kind of subsidy? Is this bridging cost, which constitutes the 200 billion naira that uh, Ipman is, is claiming? What is bridging cost? Mm. Bridging cost is the cost of bringing petroleum to from from the vessels from the vessels to some parts of the country. Okay. Based on their location, you know, and the government pays that cost because it is believed that if you are taking petroleum products to Kaduna, for example, to Sokoto and all those other it places, it will cost something than bringing it to Lagos, which is close, mm. and the rest. So now the government elects to pay the balance of that cost. That is what they call bridging cost. Now you tell me that you have removed subsidy. You tell me that uh, marketers are free to do businesses and all of that. Yet, you still pay a bridging cost. What does that bridging cost represent? It's a sub subsidy on its own. So when you say you have removed subsidy, you shouldn't be seen to be paying a bridging cost. Again, but this is the anomaly that we have seen in governance all over the years in Nigeria. Okay. So you just wonder what is subsidy, where is subsidy, uh, and whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, basically, we have a comrade bringer waiting. <laughs> comrade, so uh, uh, look at the picture holistically. Yeah, um, I think I, I agree with her that uh, the subsidy controversy actually is a symptom of a much bigger uh, fundamental crisis mm. with the management of the Nigerian oil and gas sector, uh, particularly the so-called downstream uh, sector, where virtually all aspects of the oil and gas sector now is one big uh, scandal. First of all, we are the only OPEC country. Uh, we are the only major exporter of in, oil importing in the whole world that I know of yeah. that actually depends on imported petroleum products. Finished pro products. Yes. Uh, not even Iraq that survived the war. Mm. And uh, or Iran. Perhaps much later, mm. Libya. Mm. Okay. Imports refined petroleum products, as we speak. Because even after the war, they were able to uh, fix their refineries and uh, and get back to producing uh, and, and refining. Uh, uh, comrade, another thing, another thing that boggles the mind here is you have, you have talked about Iraq. Let's refer to Nigeria and the Seven Day War, if you remember in 1967. Yeah. We made so much money. But now there's, there are skimmings in the Middle East and you expect oil producing countries to make money, but not Nigeria. Ah, well, <laughs> uh, you like understand? we said, to start with, like she said, we don't even know how much crude we are mining so. to start with. Mm. We if don't know yeah. because we hear that a large portion of whatever is mined gets to it uh, <laughs> within the, go, uh, the mm. might of Bini mm. uh, because of the activities of bunkers and uh, they are, they, are, they are cousins who actually steal uh, as much as 40% of oh. whatever quantity is produced, which makes it impossible to even meet up with OPEC quota, you know, OPEC mm. grants quotas to its members uh, as part of its attempts to regulate uh, uh, world uh, prices of uh, crude. Uh, so we can't even meet up because whatever we produce, almost half of it gets stolen. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, the refineries collapsed and for over... Collapsed by choice. Of course. Uh, close to three decades now. Mm. It's been impossible to Refine. simply turn around these refineries yeah. and yeah. Get, get them back on stream. And so we uh, relied on uh, imported products. Of course, any, any governance, any system that somebody said... You are producing beer. A chemical engineer friend once made a comment that uh, the, the, the production process of producing beer 
is almost more complex than refining proof. Mm -hmm. So you can't understand why you have uh, 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 Co comrade beer in, companies in, of in that connection. And you, you can't can refine proof. Comrade, so, in that connection, you cannot stop talking about Nigeria as a major palm oil producer in the world, importing palm oil exactly. today. No, it's the same. Uh, we are sentenced perpetually to exporting crude. So it became an issue during Algo. We made a statement as mm. Minister of Agriculture under the Obasan government at the time, uh, boasting about how much cassava they were exporting. Mm. So we had to remind him, should we be exporting or not? Cassava, mm. when we need cassava for uh, pharmaceutical grade starch, mm. which is needed in the pharmaceutical industry, which is needed in cosmetics. And so many other. The bad, uh, the, so, the bad so, so you, you export cassava and, and then you import PSG for pharmaceutical grade starch at five times the cost of what you export. You, you remember, we, 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 we talked about it once uh, the second largest de deposit of bitumen in the whole world are here. So we but we import bitumen, bitumen exactly. by choice. Exactly. Because it's cheaper to take a loan from Zeni Bank. And bring the products in that are actually investing in the uh, Now, gentlemen, is it therefore easy to understand the jinxed politics of petroleum product supply in Nigeria? Because, you see, start from 1999, the Minister of Petroleum was Obasanjo, the president himself. Mm -hmm. Apart from Jonathan, who appointed the, the lady minister. Uh, we returned to the president being uh, the Minister of Petroleum Resources for eight years under Buhari. And now the current president is the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Yeah. So why are we still in this mess? Well, that shows you uh, the, the, the importance of that uh, sector to Nigeria's uh, overall economy. We all know. And, and well-being. And our politicians will be, not Nigeria's will be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well be. So they know that that is the cash cow. Is the major uh, for, for, foreign any uh, products mm. that we have mm. in Nigeria. So they want to control it. Okay. And uh, what we see today shows you that that control is not for the benefit of the generality of the people. Okay. Because if it is for the benefit of the generality of the people, we will have seen the impact today. But things have been going down and down and down to the point that people now buy these products for 1,000 Naira per liter. When it would, even when it is available, the official cost is about 750 naira mm. to yeah. a liter, yes, per liter. And uh, we see that uh, the minimum wage has not increased from 30,000 naira that it was that it came to five years ago, mm. right? Now, these things are going up and going up and going up. Our presidents have been managing our petroleum resources. We have not seen the benefits of this management. If, if we would ever get to see. And you now wonder, you ask yourself this simple question. Like Comrade said, why is it difficult for us to refine our own products in Nigeria? If I may provide the reason, is because when we do it here, Nobody is going to benefit. Be, be, be <laughs> the, the corruption. The, the, uh, basically, consider this. The, the we, we, we consider this. We export crude to be uh, refined from outside our shores. And what comes back are refined products. What about the byproducts? Comrade, you understand what I exactly. mean? Uh, exactly. Exactly. You, you, uh, the greens and yeah. the byproducts of crude. I understand they are lost to over 44 products mm. from that you get from crude. Yeah. And of course, the collapse of the refineries has also invariably led to the collapse of so many other industries. And we don't even talk about this. Mm. I mean, better plus, the, the, uh, we all know about the more obvious ones. 
Michelin and Don Lover to close mm. that because Porta Gold Refinery was not no longer in operation. People don't know that uh, a, a, a large part of the collapse we have had in the textile industry, for instance, where over a million dollars have been lost in the past two, three decades, so can be directly attributed I, also I to that, the collapse of the refinery. I, I hear we have close to 400 textile factories around the country. Close. Close down. Yeah. So if each factory engaged about 5,000 Nigerians, you no, multiply... No, at its peak, over a million Nigerians were yeah. employed in that sector. Yeah. yeah. In that sector alone. And multiply that by 28. So yeah. There are 28 major sectors mm. in the Nigerian economy. It's not the so, textile alone. Are we damned? Are we damned as we sit here? Ah, uh, well... Uh, I think it's important that Nigerians should get more aware of actually how the the economy. There's yeah. too much politics in this country. Yeah. To the almost total neglect. All right. All right. How the, the economy life of the country. Let's look at the meat of the discussion today. How do you rationalize the bulk passing between the NNPCL and the NMDPRA? That's the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Petroleum Re Regulatory Authority, the bug passing. Well, uh, I'm, uh, it, should, it, it, it shouldn't be surprising. Okay. Well, let's face it. Uh, by the time President Chinubu was withdrawing subsidy, um, what was the exchange rate? And at the same time, was also uh, merging the so called official exchange, uh, foreign exchange flo market. Floating the Naira in the same way. Black market, yeah, which immediately led to almost doubling, yeah, of uh, uh, yes, I mean, reduction, uh, you know, supply of, of uh, the value of the naira. Now, what what does that mean? That mean that meant because we are importing. That meant as a marketer, if you needed a, a, a million naira, hypothetically now, to import X Y Z quantity of uh, refined products. You will need times two at least. You know, that's the least. But of course, it's much more. At the time, it was about $600 to a dollar. Yeah. Now, let's say one, 200. Mm. And then you have to add cost of freighting. You have to add uh, a small margin, at least for the marketer himself. And of course, demorage and all of that. So we should be talking about one pound five hundred naira per liter the, now. The, the, because the of the devaluation. The speculators have jumped into the fray and they are. Smiling to the bottom. No, when you talk of uh, exchange, foreign exchange market deregulation, we had it with Babangida's firm. Mm. Uh, you remember the second tier foreign exchange market, and I, I wish they do, wish they used to do every Thursday, he, he, and the Naira was going there every Thursday. Yeah, he, 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 when he, you he throw he your devalued the Naira three times, we cannot forget. This is, you remember the American auction, Dutch auction, and all that. <laughs> When you throw your <laughs> foreign exchange regime to, to the that uh, Kalo Kalo kind of framework, <laughs> of course, it's a speculator. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But sitting here just before we go, it, it, is it possible to quickly look at the famed uh, PIA? Um, what's that's a the Petroleum, Petroleum Industry, Industry Act. Act. Yeah. Okay. We thought it was a silver bullet that will heal everything. Actually, I think um, um, we are looking at the policies of petroleum uh, products supply, the supply in yeah. Nigeria. I think Nigeria is where it is today because of that politicking around this industry. So it, it won't matter what you put in place. If politicking is taken above every other thing, no matter how good the, the policy, the might, be. policy might, be. might be, you are not going to get We are going to mess with it. Yes, we mess with it. And obviously, that is what is going on, not only in the petroleum sector in this country, but almost in every sector of the society. And that is why you see that the country seems to be in a chaos in a mess mm. and until we remove politics and Nigerians themselves take over from these politicians and own their country. Yeah. I see you are asking if we are if we are jinxed. We will be jinxed. 
I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, with the jeans, I used to think that I used to have so much faith in this country, such that I have never encouraged any of my children to go out of that. Attempting to flee. No. In fact, consciously or unconsciously, they probably also took those things from us as their parents. And they have so much faith in, in this it. country, such that Japan is not even an attraction to Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. B.C., if we did not mess with this country, it would have been a beautiful but place But do you know in. that of late, of late, I am using time to tell my children that if I were in their age, that I would have considered Japan. <laughs> because I look at every sector of this country now, I look at the way the whole thing is being messed up. And you know, we are journalists. And because we are journalists, we have ask, ask, uh, access to mm -hmm. information that the public may not necessarily yeah. have access to. Yeah. I, feel, I feel sad, so sad. And I ask myself, when are we going to get out of this mess? Should I be encouraging anybody mm -hmm. to remain mm -hmm. in this system now? You guys, it's, oh, it's so sad. So, do you want the government to pay NMDPRA now? The, the, do the I support? understand what they are talking about? No, the, do really, I know the, the, we the, are the, 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 the scenario I was trying to point out to you is that the so called subsidy remover as a policy, and it, which, it, which is, the post the, the, is the removal is actually is extremely so fraud. It's a fraudulent claim because. Exactly. With the devaluation of the naira itself, government have to subsidize. And they are, they because, are even doing more than because if market are, if we are to buy at the uh, rate, the current yeah. rate of the naira, which will be paying one thousand five hundred per liter. So where is the difference coming from? So what we are just getting is a little tip of the iceberg. There is a lot of cover up. up here. We, we are talked about uh, uh, crude oil theft, which mm -hmm. is. One of the uh, canker worms chopping deep in, into a God-given resource. Why must that be? You are asking me. Uh, I'm asking. So, so now who I go ask? <laughs> <laughs> who do I ask here? But, but let's take it home now. Um, the president, commander in chief, is a substantive minister of petroleum, petro petroleum resources. We should be in, in trouble, or should we? And add to this the fact that we are the number two uh, oil and gas producing country on the planet after Angola. That should should have been a plus for us, uh, comrade. Ordinarily. Ordinarily. Each, each time people talk about Russia and the fact that it's literally standing up to the entire collective West now, you know, in the Russia Ukraine war, uh, I mean, it might have glitz because. Russia started to rebound, uh, you know, in 1999 when Putin came. This is exactly the same time that we were transiting to the so-called uh, democratic. Uh, and yet, Putin has used the same oil resources mm -hmm. to rebuild his country, rearm his country, and, uh, and, and relaunch his country into the yeah. Committee of World Powers. And here we are. We can't even refine the same product. Uh, and not only, uh, not only are we reeling under uh, the politics of petroleum product supply in Nigeria. Uh, cooking gas is uh, uh, gradually slipping through our fingers, uh, won't you say? That's another, mm -hmm. that's another story entirely. And uh, <laughs> the, the, that one is even... It, it is by choice, all of this. All of them, all of them. Pata, pata, everything in this country is by choice. And a deliberate... And what, a, what, what a choice. An intentional choice by those who lead us or who rule us. Mm -hmm. Who rule us? Because I don't think we really have any input. Mm -hmm. Who rule us? and choose to de define our destiny. And unfortunately, they so much done in such that an angry man, they have so much weaponized poverty that people don't see who, they are just thinking about what to eat. Busy, the, and the, not the street balance, the street balance comes here into play. Now poor, I poor, I know Chris. But the Nigerians, they're crazy now. Okay. They're poor. 
that poverty said don't enter their brain. So they they no fit think again. Otherwise, 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 all the things that we have witnessed in, in this I administration enough. Enough. Yeah. are enough to send Nigerians to the streets. But you see, that poverty has so much entered us that people are just thinking of survival. All right. Okay. On Enterprise TV, we are not suffering uh, the poverty of ideas. One of them is bringing these issues to the fore, just so you know. But let, let me thank, we'll apply the brakes here, but not before, not before thanking Comrade Gwenga Komolafe for his time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And Dr. B.C. Deji Folutile, thank you for your time, too. Thank you. We are out of here. Our business here is to... Uh, mold opinion and allow decision makers to make use of the opinion so molded. I'm out of here. I'm Citizen Jones who said bye-bye now. Take care. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.